Today at Molly Karen Ag Center, we're taking our John Deere R4038 sprayer, taking the tires off, and going over to a set of Susi tracks. track done already and it's a little bit of work let me tell you let's take a look inside and see what the boys are getting up to swapping this sprayer over to tracks as part of an ongoing study that we're participating in with the Food, Agriculture, and Biological Engineering Department at Ohio State. They're doing work looking at compaction in ag fields and how they can reduce compaction and machine size and weight as part of that. We're really looking forward to running these tracks. We get a little bit higher clearance than we would with the factory tire and we also get some later application windows because of that. We're able to get over some taller corn. Additionally, we expect to see some lowered compaction in the field as well. We started down this road looking at ways to lower our compaction in the field. Uh, and for us, kind of the first um, initial step was to put uh, tracks on our corn planter. Um, we then went ahead and we put tracks on our grain cart and we've been able to see on our farm um, some, some real benefit to doing that. As you can see, these tracks come disassembled. You put them together on site. We try to do our best to get everything staged out where it needed to be. For instance, the front left track and the back right track, they're not exactly the same. There's only a few main components. So you've got uh, the large drive wheel, um, there's some bracketry, there's the bogey wheels and the truck that supports all of those, and then there's the, the large rubber track. So the first step is to remove the factory tire. That comes off placed out of the way. There's a large bracket that gets bolted on in its place. From there, the truck is slid under that bracket and there's a large pivot pin that holds the truck to that bracket. The guys here use an impact wrench. The bolt that secures that pin in place has to be torqued to 700 foot pounds. So we got ended up getting ourselves a pretty big cheat bar and doing our best to hit that number. The drive wheel has some cogs that have to be bolted together separately. We use the wheel loader to pick it up and make it a little bit easier to get on the studs there of the sprayer. Then we get the drive wheel mounted on the sprayer. Once that's on, the bogey wheels go back on and it's ready to put the rubber track itself on. Now, it sounds relatively straightforward. I can tell you that there's a lot of, there's a lot of sweat and hard work that goes into making that happen. Uh, the track itself is uh, pretty heavy and it requires a lot of soap and water to get things to slide into place properly. We found that it was pretty easy to, to get it into the initial spot that it needed to go, but you could never quite get the drive lugs on the rubber track lined up with the drive cogs on the wheel there. So one of the tricks that we found was we were able to put the parking brake on the sprayer and fire it up, shift it into neutral. And with a couple of long poles, we could slide that cog wheel just enough to get it to line up with the drive lugs in the track. And from that point, it was just a matter of a little bit of persuasion with the sledgehammer and we got it on there.
special thanks to the food, agricultural, and biological engineering team. They were really a, a big help with this project. Those guys have a lot of neat studies going on right now looking at compaction. I highly encourage you to check out the 2019 eFields book that they've put together. If you like what you saw here, go ahead and give us a like and feel free to subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And of course, you can visit us on our website at fsr.osu.edu.